Jam friends and welcome to Zazumi. I'm Sherry Barbera and today we are talking about NFT art, how to create characters and traits. And of course, I am so excited. Oh my God, I don't have my, Sal doesn't have his, woo! So I guess I have to do it myself, woo! <laughs> there we go, okay. So we are talking about NFT art, how to create characters. You start with a backstory. That is the best way for you to create NFT characters because it's past the point where you can just create a collection that doesn't mean anything. It's got to have some kind of story. Even Goblin Town that was without a Discord, without, you know, didn't have any of the stuff, it didn't have a Dox team, now they're doxed didn't have any of the things that typically you would expect with an NFT collection, they still have a backstory about the goblins and Goblin Town. If you start with a backstory for your characters, it will help you design based on your story. It will help you figure out your characters based on the story and then based on each character's backstory. In other words, you don't need to have everything looking exactly the same anymore like Board Ape Yacht Club. Your characters can have completely different shapes, completely different heads, completely different bodies. See how this head is shaped sort of lumpy like a potato? <laughs> and then there's this crazy little body just wearing a bra and, and holding a hand up, you know. Um, wacky ears and things like that, but then so different from this character. And that is what I'm talking about. Look at how this body shape is completely different. Look at the head, how different. One ear down, one ear up. Look at the accessories, how the eyes are completely different. Mouth, nose. This is when you start to create something that has character to it, and this is why now, a character means something completely different for an NFT. It means that you can add character, really character, to your NFT collection and make them much more unique looking. Here is another example of how different, look at these lips compared to what we just looked at. Look at this body, it's got a shirt on it. The ears are pierced. There are, there's a ring, you know, everything is different. Look at this hat. So when you think about your character you want to think about multiple characters in your collection that each one has a story in your head so that when you start creating traits which are the things that are the this is what traits are what make a character exciting a character is just a group of properties it's just a head it's just a body it's just ears it's just a background those are just properties. That's what builds a character, but it's traits. Those are what really make a character exciting. So what kinds of ears, what kinds of accessories, what kinds of eyes do they have? Multiple traits are what really make a collection exciting. And look at, I mean, you can just see an eye with a peace sign in it as opposed to an eye with a star in it. So two completely different eyes, a left eye, a right eye that is different. Look at how the nose is different, the mouth, the color of the head is different. Even the body, <laughs> this body, right? <laughs> this crazy body. And these are the kinds of things that if you think about how to make your collection more interesting, more exciting, more saleable, because that is one of the words that you really, really want to think about. How do you make your collection super saleable, super exciting? How do you build that FOMO, that fear of missing out on something that's very unique and different? And the way that you do this is by making your collection much more interesting and different from what's out there already. So I'm just gonna take a quick, a quick stop here and say, hello, Sal. Hello, Sherry. <laughs> Good morning, honey. Hello, friend. And who's here? Who have we got here? So we've got, hello, Rob. Great to see you. Thank you so much for being here. And yay, Dale, GM, glad you're back in town. Hello He's to Robin, back, too. Dan yay. <laughs> and everyone else who is here, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. I know my sister is here. Hi, Pam. 
And we are always grateful and thankful for all of you. So look at the eyes, how they're shooting out of the eyes. This is something that you can think of. Look at the diamond hands. That's what that's all about. And if you're not familiar with what diamond hands are, go look at our video about all of the different slang terms that NFTs have, and you will understand what diamond hands are all about. If you use many different types of shapes for your characters, you start creating a collection that when it's generated, when it goes into the software, and gets generated to 3,000 or 6,000 or 10,000 unique characters, you will start to see a collection that has a ton of interest, that has a lot of uniqueness, that looks really, really special, as opposed to something that is so typical where everything is like either facing this way or facing this way or facing, or you know, whatever it is, it's not going to be all the same, same, same old. So you want to create distinctive properties and traits. Now, properties, not so much, doesn't really matter if they're distinctive. Traits, yes, that is super, super important. The reason why is because you want to generate as much excitement to purchase as you possibly can. And this is the collection of Goblin Girls that was created almost like a day after Goblin Town came out. So you know, what did they do? Scrape it? Probably. I don't know. But anyway, the colors, fabulous. It was created by, um, I think it was Girls in Tech. And it, it helps to fund Girls in Tech, Women in Tech. So wonderful to collect these. I, I love them. I think they're fabulous. Love the colors. So cute and funny and wacky and weird. And this is the kind of thing that you want to focus on. Now, if there are questions about what I've just covered, please, if you're here live, put them in the chat. If not, put them in the comments below, and I would love to get to them. And one quick, honey, oh, look who's here, Julie. Hi, Julie, <laughs> welcome. We haven't seen you in a while. Thank you so much for, for being here. We appreciate you, great to please. see you. Okay, so, properties and traits. Properties are what you build your character on. Properties are, for example, the background, the head, the body, the mouth, the ears, the eyes. These are properties. They are main things that you build your character from. Traits. Traits are, for example, two different eyes, one with a peace sign, one with a star in them maybe a crown as a hat, as opposed to you know just a floppy little hat. Maybe the ears are butterfly wings instead of just typical ear, well, these aren't typical ears, but you know what I mean, like just ears. And this is how the traits, and this would be something like light pink, one up, one down ear, or light pink ears, or dark pink ears with, um, earrings or studs in them. This would be butterfly wing ears, you know. So this is what a trait is. A trait is what makes your properties super special. And that is how you create really dynamic, exciting characters. And if you look at a character like this, it actually has some kind of persona. You could literally see a character like this in a movie, couldn't you? You could see her, you know, talking like this or something like that, and with her lips all, you know, pursed up like this, and and her little her little shirt with her name tag on. So, if you think about a character as an actual character in a movie, and you start to build your collection with a backstory, just like they do for a movie, you will have a much more exciting, much more dynamic collection than many of the collections that are out there right now. And this is why often when a collection is based on a game, a video game, it is more interesting, it is more exciting because there is a story that goes along with the characters. And this is what I want you to think about. If you're not doing a game, then create a story for your collection. Properties are, for example, background, body, eyes, mouth, hair, head, hat, accessories. Those are properties. Properties are the building blocks 
of your character. Think of them like building blocks. And then when you are laying out your initial character, you always want to have the size of your Canvas. frame for your character. This is the canvas that you will be building on. And we will be showing you today, Sal will be showing you in Procreate right. on his iPad. Sal will be showing you what I mean by that. So you start with a specific size and then you duplicate that for every single one of the levels and layers that you build your character in, in order to be sure that everything lines up on the layers perfectly. So you want to start with basically a grid that you center everything in, and then if it's off the center, still it will center with the traits because you have lined everything up initially. And what I mean by that is even though her body here, you can see that her body is off center, still you can see how everything is lined up and centered perfectly in the middle of the canvas. And so this is why you want to create one size, do everything on one size, one same size. And typically the smallest size you would want to do is 800 by 800 pixels. But many collections now are as large as 3200 by 3200 pixels. And the reason for that is because people now are printing out their NFTs and putting them on the wall. The higher the pixel, the better the quality of the print. And this is the reason for that. It's the traits that are going to make your properties interesting, unique, and fun. It's the traits, the eyes, the head, the ears, the hands, the body, the lips, these, the nose, these are the things. What do you do with those properties, those building blocks to make them exciting? It's the traits. And this is where you can have a ton of fun and do something really special. And collections today have multiple traits, not just a few traits, a lot of traits. And that is why collections are looking more and more exciting now. And when I say a lot of traits, instead of one body, maybe there are 10, right? Maybe there's a body that has 10 different shapes to it or 10 different colors or 10 different things happening to it. Maybe there are eyes that have 12 different ways that the eyes are being projected. And this is the kind of thing, even 28, even 51 different accessories. There are collections now that have as many traits as that. And so I want you to start thinking in terms of traits to make your collection more exciting. Then you want to think about rarity because every collection has rarity in it. And what you can do with rarity is literally you can create a character, an entire character, doesn't even have to have layers, that you upload as one unique NFT that is rare. And you don't have to worry about how do I make all of this work together. It literally just is one specific character that you've created and it looks like whatever you want it to and it doesn't look like anything else. It's totally rare. But you want to have rarity in your collection. And this is something that you need to also add in when you're thinking about how many NFTs total are you going to be making in your generative collection? If you're doing a 10K, a 10,000 collection project, how many of those, maybe 10, maybe 13 of those will be rare? Are you going to make one unique rare thing or are you going to say, okay, out of all of the different properties, only this one property is going to show up as a unique rare NFT? There are multiple ways to do rarity, but you want to really think about how are you going to create rare characters? You want to think about that right from the beginning because you want to add it to your story. And everybody wants to know what's your story? What's the backstory on this? So, okay, before I keep going, I'm going to pop over to us oh. for a quick second. Are there any questions? Because if not, we are going to go to Sal's iPad and he is going to show us 
hopefully from the beginning, <laughs> from zero, from net zero. Like, how do you, how do you make to, your, your... I was trying to quickly oh, right. give an example. All right, so I am going to pop over. Now we're going to go to Sal's iPad. And these are, these are some of Sal's drawings. This is George Washington, <laughs> one of my favorite people in the world. And this is Sal, a drawing of Sal as Sal. And then this is Sal as Superman, because he drew Superman also. So let's go over to Sal's iPad. And this is what, this is what Procreate looks like before you have even started doing something. And you can see that Sal has already started creating duplicates of one size paper. Canvas. Canvas. So how do you create a new canvas? I will show you. I will show you. So you hit the plus. I already have it set up that the NFT canvas is RGB 2400 by 3000 pixels, which makes smoother lines when you're drawing because it's so many pixels. So if I click, I push on that, a new canvas comes up that I can use and you can immediately just start drawing and i'm going to pop over to you for one second oh. um show everyone your stylus that you're using oh so this is the new one that i just got and it's got a little um magnetic circle on top so you can use it on your ipad you can use it on your iphone and you never have to charge it which is a beautiful thing do you have the it'll box never, it'll never stop working do you have the box to show them what that you is do have the box. great it's called um Stylus home, high sensitivity. Oh, it's backwards. What did that say? That's okay. No. High sensitivity anyway, stylus. Stylus, high sensitivity stylus, and. Um, and how much was that? It came with two stylus. Thirteen dollars and seventy-five cents, and it came with two of them, <laughs> a white one and a black one, which it was. Odd. I couldn't even understand. And it's got like four extra tips to put on to use to do different kinds of drawings. So I'll put a link to the stylus. I, I haven't done it yet, but I'll put a link to the stylus in the con in, in the description below this video so that you can click directly to it and order it if you want to. That yeah, was Amazon, right? It's absolutely cool. It was Amazon. It was Amazon. Yeah, okay. Like so let's go back to your iPad. Okay. So anyway, we're, we created our canvas the size we wanted it to be for the NFTs because it is smoother lines. And you just basically, you can pick your color by pushing on the color dot and then it gives you the color wheel and then you can just make your drawing now I'm not I'm just you know roughly making it because I would make it neater than that but you can fill it in just by pulling the color over just like that which is an absolutely cool thing you got your eraser you can erase where it's you know cocky and then you can just continue drawing now the next thing you do is it shows you your layers and and how do you how did you get to layers you just push on this double square on the top right which designates layers right on the top right next to the circle the color circle so you hit the plus sign and it gives you the next layer and the reason you want to do that is because everything you do you want it to be traits or properties so every layer will be its own its own its own layer its own layer it, so so Which you are you actually training. building your layers immediately right. it's not like you have to worry about how does that work so, I mean, basically, you're building them immediately yeah. so, so let's go back let's go back to that and and just show so i'm on the second i'm on the second layer that i just created by hitting the plus sign and i'm going to change the color because i'm going to make you just slide it over and you put it up to where you want the color to be the stylus is wonderful and you can just make eyes. Now, if you hold it, it makes a perfect circle. If you hold, if you what, hold, if you hold it, what? It makes a perfect circle on the canvas. If you hold the stylus onto the canvas for like two seconds. Okay, let me just put you up here. And can you, can you? I could back it up and show you. Okay. So, oh, can, can oh, you hold up the, yeah. What am I doing? Um, okay, so that was the stylus, so now, I'm just making a circle and I'm holding it and it makes it a perfect circle and I'm making a circle these are the two eyes okay I'm gonna go back over to us for a second I is there a way that you can just turn the iPad and show people with in right into your camera uh, what I know right into your camera there okay now just put the can you put the stylus on there just to show people what it is that you're doing well yeah 
Okay, here. Okay. I'll, I'll make a mouth. Okay, that's what I meant. See, so you're holding it. I'm holding it for another two seconds after I make the circle. Oops. And there. then it's just making it a perfect circle. And as you hold it, you know, I'll, you know, I'll do it again. Wait, I'll back up. Hold on. So wait, okay. let me just go back to the iPad. Can you show how you went back on that, on the iPad? Okay, so look, I made a circle and I held it and it made it a perfect circle. And then I just hit the... Uh, now you go over to the left bottom side of the iPad. Where it has like a little swish with an arrow on it, right? Point at that. Yeah, I know. what I can't. So that that's oh. the thing is I need a little pointer on right here. There. there you go. And then you can just push that and it goes away. Or you can redo it. Okay, so, so now can you show the layers and then show clicking off of the layer? Okay, so I, have, I only have two layers right now. So the first layer is just the heart. The second layer is the three circles that would be the eyes and the mouth. If I click, if I click the check button on that layer, it takes them off. So you see how the layers are separate. Same thing if I do it with the red, it's just the circles. And this is this is Procreate. So you can make and in you can, Procreate. You can make as many layers as you want. You can make hundreds of layers. It's Pro P R O Create, and it's unfortunately right now it's only for Mac. Right. Right. It is. I think. But but I haven't checked in a while. But, but they did I just think, make a version for the iPhone too. Yeah, which that's is why wonderful. I can, that's why I got these styluses so I can use it on the iPhone and I can draw anywhere and yeah, make my really NFTs cool. anywhere. Really cool. It's very cool. So. When you're using Procreate with a stylus, it doesn't have to be the, the pencil for the, um, it doesn't have to be an Apple pencil, it can just be a stylus. This is really cool to know. But it's gotta be one that's magnetic, like this one. It can't just be a regular stylus because it's not gonna work on an iPad or an iPhone. That's a great point. And the other thing that you can do on Procreate that is so cool is you can just use your finger to draw. You can. You don't yeah, even have to so have a stylus. So NFTs you see, obviously, you can draw with your finger. You can draw with your toe. Right. <laughs> so and you can make your NFTs, and it, all right, they're gonna have rough edges, and they're gonna look weird. Okay. But that's looks okay. like people like that. Yeah, people do like that, and so you could literally do a finger painting NFT if collection. If you start a collection just by using your finger, and you use your finger every single time, now you have a unique collection that looks all the same. So it's awesome. Rob said, what's that drawing software called? Very cool. And we said Procreate. And Rob said, just checked it. I know it's so cheap, right? 10 bucks. It's fantastic. Okay. So it is for iPad only. Thanks for checking on that, Rob. So right now it still is for, it's not for iPad only because you can now use it on your phone as well, but it's for Mac only. iPad and iPhone. Right now. Yeah, yeah, right now. Right. But there probably is software for PC that is similar to, to this to use on a tablet. We, we're just Mac people, so we don't know. That's why we're showing you in Procreate. But let's go back to the iPad. I want to show you. Okay, so Sal, click back on um, how to rename a layer. Okay, I'm glad you said that because I renamed the layer. Let me show you. The ape I made. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I made an ape. Just last night I quickly drew an ape and I named it. If you can read that, oh, I don't think I can make it bigger. It's called Blued Ape. Blued. B L U E D. Ape. I blued his head. So uh, I just, you know, <laughs> I had to name him something. And that, I don't, I, you know what? And this one I made a mistake because I didn't make a layer so, for every single okay, thing. Okay, so I drew. show what that looks like. Okay, I did not make a layer. It's, it's going to look bad. Because I didn't make a layer for everything I drew. But you you did make a bunch of layers. I made some layers. I made some layers. But you should make a layer for every single thing you draw separately. Like if you make eyes, if you make eyelashes, if you make eyelids, if you make lips, if you make a nose, if you make ears. You can do it all separately. This way you have that many more... That many more traits. Traits. That many more traits. Exactly. And Julie said, is there a software for PC? And Rob said, just Googled Ibis Paint X, huh? one of the best Procreate Android alternatives. Thank you, Rob. You can Look work on Rob multiple go. layers. <laughs> you're, you're awesome, go Rob. Rob. Go. You can work on multiple layers for your art just like you can in Procreate. Perfect app for creating. Thank you, Rob. Awesome. Thank you for that. So why do you need layers? Why do you need layers? 
You need layers so that when you are doing a generative collection, this is not for one of ones. Right. You do not need layers for one of ones. No. When you are doing a generative collection, every layer is what the software program will look at. You say, okay, this particular trait, this particular layer trait, will be in 5% of the collection on this particular body with this particular head. And that is why you use layers, so that the software that generates your collection understands the traits, the earrings, the different mouths, the different noses, the different hair, the different hats, that will be going on with your properties, with your building blocks. Right. Okay? So, Building blocks are properties, traits, those are the exciting things that you're adding onto your building blocks to make them saleable, <laughs> to make your collection unique, exciting, and wonderful. Right. Okay, let's go back to, the, any questions on that? Any it's questions? a lot of fun. Okay, let's go back to the iPad. So, <clears throat> if you were to deselect the lips, okay. can you just go back to that to what? layer? <clears throat> Go back to that layer and see how it's labeled lips. So Sal renamed it just by clicking on where the words are. And then with I threw the stylus, other stuff when I shouldn't have on the lip layer. Which, which saying, is another good mistake. reason to right. have layers. Right. Right. But really fast. click into the lip layer so that you can show them how to rename something. Okay. So you, if, you put, if you push on the lip layer... It is right on top. It says rename. It says rename. And, and now... Literally, it's highlighted where you can just rename it. And I can write green lips. And the reason to write green lips for the lips is because now it's a trait. Exactly. Green is what makes it a trait. I can do trait. blue lips. I can do red lips. Show, I can do show them yellow. how simple it is to duplicate this. Okay. Step so, by step. What do you do? All right, so if I'm just going to do different colored lips, well, see, that's going to be a... Oh, no, it's not. It's going to still have the extra stuff okay. on it. Okay, so I'm so what sorry. If we start, that was what if sound. we do layer two, okay? <laughs> but that's going to have different stuff. This is not a good example <laughs> to you. <laughs> we weren't prepared to do That's this. okay. Layer two is fine because you can change the color. It's fine. Okay, so I'm going to name layer two sweater. But now you want to name it red sweater. You're right. So now I want to name it red sweater. Red sweater. Thank you very much. So now, if I'm in this layer and I want to, I want to push it one more time, you just poke it, and you want to copy it. Is that right, Chuck? Yeah. Okay. You copy the layer. Oh, wait a minute. No. No, we don't want to do that. No, we, you don't want to do that. You want to duplicate it. I want to duplicate it. But so, oh, okay. So you swipe it to the left. You there we go. swipe the layer. I'm kind of excited doing this right now because <laughs> I never actually taught it to anyone. So when you swipe it to the left, you push duplicate, and it duplicates it. All right? So then you go to the alternate layer, which you're on as soon as you push it, and say, I want to make the sweater blue. That didn't work. So I'm not on the right layer. You're not on the right layer. So I want to make the sweater blue? No, it's 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 that okay. Let's let's go back to us for a second. Okay. <laughs> Sal's all excited about this, you could tell. So let me just say layers make sense when you think of them sideways, okay? The bottom layer, your background, is the back layer. As you're building your layers, the closest one, the top layer, is what you're gonna see first. Right. So if I go back to the iPad. It's better to start with a new one, I think. Go ahead. All right. So we're starting with a new canvas, okay? Let's just make a blue circle, all right? Okay. Let's fill it in. Let's make a second layer. Just hit the plus for the layer and fill it in with the color. Okay. Let's just pick this color, fill it in. Okay. That didn't work. Why didn't that work? It didn't work because the layer that you're on. I have to change the layer. This is okay, how so, you learn. So the reason that didn't work was because when Sal made a second layer, it was a layer above the circle. So now exactly. it was just the whole size of the canvas. So when he filled in the color, it was literally just filling the whole canvas in. 
what he should have done Thank was you. duplicated the circle and then that would have been the layer right, on top to... of the circle and then filled in that circle with a color. So let's go back to the iPad. Okay, we're back okay. to the iPad. We're starting from scratch. So it starts with the background color, which is white. Then your first layer. Okay, is gonna be the circle, let's say. Okay. Then I'm going to duplicate the layer. And I'm gonna to go to the second layer. No. No, you stay on the layer you're on. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to fill a layer with a different color. There we go. Okay, but now you have a circle with a, a line around it. Is that what you want? I'm creating a character. Okay. I'm so, just asking. No, no, no. It was a good question. It was okay, good question. I'm, I'm just asking because I want you to understand how the layering works. If you fill in something, if you fill in a circle, you're literally filling in a circle. You're not filling the outline right. of the circle. Exactly. Okay. So Let's the go beauty back of this it. program is, and obviously I'm still learning how to use it, and it takes me a while to get an <laughs> NFT together, but the beauty of it is it's got, you can back up with a button, you can back up and erase whatever you've done, you've done and start over and start over and start over until you get it right. Okay, let's, you, show, the, let's show the eraser again. All right, so the point is if you make a, you don't want that. Down on the bottom left, you can't see my pointer, but can you point to that where I can back up? You can't. No, I okay. need, I need well, the pointer. Well, if you look at the little, there's two, two rectangles that you slide up and down. Right here, I'm showing you. Okay, that makes your, your pen bigger, your drawing point. Okay, bigger. I'm gonna go to you, and I want you to hold up your iPad and just show that on the iPad. Okay. Because we didn't... So, but I don't think you'll see it. So you don't see it. I can't do that. Yeah, go that way, okay. You can't see what's on the screen, sure. Oh, you can't see it well it. enough, okay. All right, so I can show it if you go to the iPad. So if you see the, the, the word on the side, it's the size of the pen tip. Look on the left side of the screen and you'll see or size is getting larger and smaller. the size of the pen tip. And then the bot, one under that is the um, opacity. Is that the way you say it? Mm -hmm. And it shows you, you can make it lighter or darker of what you're drawing. And then below that, there's a little curly cue with an arrow on it. And if you push that, you go backwards and you erase what you did. Or the one under it now, after you erased it, you can push that and it comes back on the screen. That's how easy that is. So just quickly show how to make a character really quickly. Okay, do I have to do layers? Yeah, just show the layers. Okay, all right, so layers, we're on a second layer now, right? So let's do eyes. Okay, but we don't want to do the eyes on the second layer. We want them on the third layer, above. Okay. So, so add, a, add a layer. Oh, I thought I did. Add another layer? Yeah, add another layer. Okay. Did no, you, you duplicated the layer. We just want, we just want a layer for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what an instructional video this is. We're like, what? <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> it's Bear with us, guys. We're doing it. Dysfunctional instructional. <laughs> We're going back to the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Right. But this is good. You're learning what not to do and what to do. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay. So, del so delete. See how they're all named layer one? That's an also very confusing. Okay. We're going to delete that layer. You want me to delete this layer too? No. No. Okay. Okay. So just add the, click the plus sign, add a new layer. Adding a new layer. Okay. And this layer you're going to put eyes on. Okay. I'm going to put eyes on this layer. So we'll just do the, the whole thing. Okay. Yellow eyes. And you're holding, you're holding down the I'm stylus. I'm holding down so it makes it a circle. But if you pull back and forth, it can change the size. If you pull what back and forth? If you leave the stylus on the canvas and you slide it up or down, let's say. Okay, I'm gonna, if I'm you gonna turn add it, you. Look at this, if you turn it, it'll make a different oh. shape. You, can, it, you have a whole bunch of flexibility. And the way I'm seeing NFTs, you don't want the eyes to be the same size, they can be different sizes, so it makes it more interesting. 
Now, should I make the eyeballs another layer? The eyeballs. Um, make a nose. Make a nose a new layer. So name the layer, name layer three eyes. And you want to name them yellow eyes because they're specifically yellow. Yellow eyes. And this way you're, you're starting to build your traits. Okay. And you can duplicate those eyes and, and make them green or white this. or whatever. I'm going to name it red nose. Okay. So the new layer is a red nose. And we're going to go to red. We're going to go to red. And so you're just pulling your colors up on the top right where you see that red dot. That's I'm where your colors are. I'm going to just paint it in so I have a red nose. Okay. okay, and now we need a new layer. New layer, get another plus. You hit the plus, and we're going to make a mouth. Okay. Well, we, meaning Sal. What am I, a okay. nurse? <laughs> I'm not a nurse. <laughs> I'm going to do a yellow mouth. Okay, so I hope if you have questions about what Sal's doing, quick put them right now in the Change comments so the that color. we can answer it, okay? Change the color to yellow. Make a yellow mouth. Oh, that was weird. That was weird. So what did you hold it down? I held it down and it made it into a straight line. Which okay, really so maybe you want to, that's like a mad mouth. That's kind of funny. Okay, so there's your happy mouth. There's your sideways mouth. <laughs> There's your smirky see, now, mouth. If, see, yeah, that's an interesting thing. So it made it into a line, but if you hit the back button, it makes it back into your original drawing of what you did. And remember, the back button is on the bottom left side. It's that little curved arrow. Right, exactly. And the curved top arrow is to go back, and the curved bottom arrow is to go forward again. Exactly. Okay. So show all the different layers, Sal. Okay, so here are all the different layers. Okay, so if you deselect on the right side of the layers, if you deselect the check mark, then right. you don't see that layer. That's how that works. You you can Okay, so Julie has a question. Let me just pop it up oh, here. Oh, good. Are you assigning traits to specific layers? Excellent question, Julie. And the answer to that is yes. What you're doing is you are creating your layers of traits and when you export this, you're going to export it as a PSD file, a Photoshop document file. And the reason you export it as PSD is because it maintains the layers. And then you can pop it into Photoshop if you have Photoshop and, and, and we're only talking about Procreate and Photoshop on this particular video. Then when you put it into Photoshop, you can now start with your main property. So your main property would be eyes. That's a main building block property. Under eyes, now you're going to have your individual layered traits. Green eyes, blue eyes, winking eye, bored eyes, sad eyes, whatever kind of eyes that you're going to have, you've labeled those layers. Those are traits of your property, your building block, your eyes, okay? So that is, that is the answer to your question. And then Rob said, undo and redo. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> undo and redo makes it so Thanks, much Rob. simpler to know what you're Duh. talking about, right? So I'm going to go back to the iPad. And if you deselect the yellow mouth. If you deselect the red nose and you're just unchecking that check mark, you can start to see not only how you are building your character with the individual properties, but how you are also creating the layers of traits in Procreate to make that character interesting and fun. And you can you can make that yellow mouth, you can duplicate the yellow mouth and make a yellow mouth sad, a yellow mouth happy, a yellow mouth angry, a yellow mouth smiling, whatever it is that you want to do to make that yellow mouth multiple traits. And then all of a sudden, simply and quickly, you've got multiple traits when you just had 
one particular property, which was a mouth. Now all of a sudden you've got a yellow mouth, a yellow sad mouth, a yellow happy mouth, a yellow smiling mouth, you know, whatever it is that you want to do. And then you could literally duplicate all of those in, in Procreate, change the color to blue, change the color to green, change the color to whatever you want it to be. And this is how you so quickly, incredibly quickly, create maybe 15 traits that fast. That is how fast it is to create traits. You don't need to think, oh my God, what am I gonna do? You just need to think in terms of what do I want my characters to have? Do I want them to be smiling? Do I want them to be angry? Do I want them to be goofy? Do I want them to be sad? Do I want them to be happy? What do you want for your characters? And then how do you create those traits and multiply them easily and quickly and make things that are obviously different for multiple characters in a generative collection. So do you have questions about that? Because as you can see, you can do so much. Sal is now creating, so he created a yellow bow tie, yellow a red bow tie, yellow mouth, red nose, yellow eyes, and then layer one needs to be named head, I think. And Right, I didn't put the, the hoosie on the head, the name of the tree. But right now I was just making, oops. Uh, what, what are you doing here? I was making a red bow tie with yellow dots. And the red bow tie is, is one layer and the yellow dots are another layer. Because then they can be different colored dots. They can be different colored bow ties. And you have more and more traits. Okay, I'm going to go back to us for a second. Okay. okay, so, oh wait, I'll just go to me then. Because you're drawing. If you wanted to create, let's say, multiple bow ties, like Sal did, so he has one property that's bow ties, let's say, and then over the bow ties, maybe you have polka dots, maybe you have squiggly lines, maybe you have radiating lines, maybe you have um, little animals of something, maybe you have cats or whatever it is. So all of your bow ties, your bow ties could have 25 different traits. Do you see how simple it is to create really interesting, different traits for your building block properties to make your characters really pop, really shine, really fun, weird, interesting, different, unusual, ugly, beautiful, crazy, whatever it is that you want to do, whatever your backstory is for your collection. Keep it in mind when you're creating all of these traits and properties that you want to accentuate as much as possible whatever it is that creates these character personas so that you have something that is really, really special. And I am just going to go back to the slides now and I'm going to keep going. Wait, you didn't look at what I did. Oh, sorry. Okay, let's just pop back to, <laughs> to Sal's finalized character so it looks to me like the collection is all about clowns it's not final life on that all of a sudden it is now right it is. but i didn't give him a body yet which i would give him a body okay so so if the collection is about clowns and you're you're creating different colored heads and you're you're doing different bow ties and different hats and different well, eyes and yeah. different mouths and things like that because he's already got one two three four five six seven eight nine layers okay let's look at that so he's got nine layers and then if you were to draw a little teeny body underneath there, yeah. and that would be another layer, just a, a... Oh, come on, let's just do it. Okay, just draw a little tiny body under there for your little clown guy. Okay. And you can see how simple it is to all of a sudden create a whole collection of clowns, or anything that you want, any kind of collection that you want. Wow, that is really... That is you really said simple. simple. <laughs> you said simple and I gave him simple. Now he would have different colored hands, different colored feet, shoes, I'm sorry, different colored shoes. Okay, so shoes would be a property, a building block, right? And then the yeah. shoes would have individual traits. Shoelaces. Whatever. Okay, and then the body, you could have, body will be a property, a building block for your character, and then the traits would be whatever you do with that body. Belly buttons. Whatever it's got. 
<laughs> whatever, like, whatever you want. It's whatever like, you want. So do you have questions about that? Because now is the time to ask them before I recap everything that we have just covered. So please put your questions right now in the chat or in the comments below. So when you create your characters, you want to create original characters. You don't want to do what everybody else is doing. How do you do that? Determine your main properties and then from your main properties, your traits will be based on the persona of your backstory. And this is such an important thing for today's NFTs. We are not talking about even a year ago. Things have changed that dramatically in the NFT space. So now you need a backstory, you need personas for each one of your characters, you need multiple body shapes, you need to create interesting characters that have multiple traits that create personas. And if you think in those terms, you will come up with a successful, successfully unique collection. Remember, when you layer, everything goes from the back forward. You are layering forward. You don't want to cover up something unless you actually want to cover it up. So you layer front to back. Whoops, I think I forgot to lock that. You. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, you lay front to back. <laughs> and then you, here we go. All right. And then you have your base character with everything building on top of it. And Julie said, what do you mean by backstory? I understand personas. Okay, let me, let me fill you in on this again. When you're creating a character for a movie, and this is, this is really what I'm talking about, Julie. I'm talking about when you create a movie character, you give that character what's called a backstory. What was their life before the movie started? That's the backstory. And this is how you start to create interesting characters that actually have a persona, that actually stand out from any of the other characters. And if you think, for example, of a character in a movie that's got a lot of quirks to it, this is what you remember about someone in a movie. Like, even if we were just to use Superman, what is a quirky thing about Superman? I mean, besides the fact that he's got x-ray vision, besides the fact that he's super and can fly, kryptonite, right? So kryptonite is something that is a backstory. We know from the backstory that kryptonite is something that weakens Superman. So his whole backstory is where did he come from? Who were his parents? What was his life like before he ended up on earth? That's the backstory. And then how is he super? That's the backstory. What happens today in the movie moving forward this is your NFT collection. Your NFT collection is all about today and who these characters are today and moving forward. So you are creating this character based on a backstory of some sort. And that's what is going to separate your collection from everybody else's. Because if it's just generic art, not that there's anything wrong with that as an artist, it's great, right? that is not going to sell as well as a collection today that has a great backstory, that has exciting characters, that's got a lot of variety, that has multiple, multiple traits to it, where the building blocks of properties make it simple for you to create something super special. And that is what I'm talking about. But that was a great question. Thank you very much for that. So, be sure you line up on the center of the page so that you still, no matter whether it's leaning or whatever you do with your, your body or your heads or no matter what, all of your traits will line up the way that they should when they're put into the generating software. The other thing that you might want to think about is leaving room on top if you're doing hats or if you're doing things that are coming out of a head. So you don't want to be, you don't want the top of your canvas to be right at the very top 
of your character if you're planning on adding heads or planning on adding something else to your character in the traits because then you're not gonna have room for it. So remember to do that. Okay, questions on that. I'm Don't gonna pop over one, to the mo like the most the coolest feature about Procreate the coolest feature of our Procreate, can you put the, the iPad screen on for a second? Okay. Okay. So now he's got pink shoes. That's another trait. Well, look, I put, I put him on the layer. There we go. Pink shoes are on the right. You can see he's got pink shoes. Okay. With Procreate, you can do this, which I forgot is the coolest feature in the world. If you want to draw something really small, or if you want to get something really accurate and exact, you can blow the screen up to as close as you want. And how do you, how do you do that? You just put your fingers on the screen and you spread them out. Okay. And it just zooms in to however close you want to get to me. And you can make your lines finer. Can on you? Your... Can you show that? I can't. Oh. Okay. But you can take your <laughs> stylus and you can make the lines finer by moving. I mean, can you show just into the camera how you would? Oh, just separate your fingers, and it'll just zoom right in on the page. And it gets it could get as close as you want. It could get so close. Put it back on the iPad again. Okay, I'm putting on the iPad. It gets so close that you see the pixels, wow. and you can literally, if you take the eraser, eliminate one pixel at a time. Okay, sorry. Why isn't it working? With oh, your stylus. I'm not on the right layer. Okay. okay. So whatever layer that is. Remember, you want to be on on the layer that you're working on because because you can oh, get that's the body. frustrated okay, quickly. Okay, so if I'm on the body layer, look at this. It you could take off. Well, not if you do that. And the other thing is, you go back. You can make it. You got to make it really small to do that. You could take off one pixel at a time to neaten it up to make it really clean. Because then when you zoom out again, I'm pulling my fingers together. It just makes it smoother when it gets to be the actual. The actual size of so my the, point was going to be image. I'm going to do my green hands and they're going to be very small so what just happened oh okay green hands don't go anywhere I'm doing this okay okay so there okay, I just want to show you that when you zoom back out he can have little green hands <laughs> okay and is he just going to have a little green right hand, or is he going to have a left hand? Too? Of course, he's going to have a left hand. <laughs> okay. Oh, I have to do that. Uh, now? Yeah, well, draw the left hand. Okay, I'll zoom back in. These are very sloppy hands, but you get the general idea. Okay, now show the layer of the green hands. Okay. Layer of the green hands. And then deselect that layer. Deselecting by hands, you just push on the arrow. There you go. Okay, and the, the hands are mark. gone. You uncheck the check mark. Okay, what? I'm going to go back to us for a second. Okay. Okay, so you can see how easy it is. Dale said, can Procreate be used to alter or manipulate an existing photo? Yes. Sal has done that. Yes. Yes. Many times. Yes. yes. You, know, and you can take somebody's body and put somebody's head on it. You can import photos of anything into Procreate, put them on your drawn body, or on anything you've drawn, you can take a photograph, put it in there, change the size of it so that it fits on top of whatever you're putting it on top of. Yeah, so we, we could show that, <clears throat> actually we could do a live stream on that, that'd be fun. Good. Because there, there's so many things about Procreate that are fantastic that, that, that for NFTs. That is one of the more fun things to do on Procreate. Yeah. You can almost do anything. And I guess just real quick, put it on the iPad one second. I don't I can't go into you know, detail, but I wanna show you one thing. So there's a little wrench on the top, where it says gallery in the top left of the screen. So go up to the top left of the screen, look at the top left, and you'll see the very first tool is a wrench. Click right. on After the wrench. After the word gallery, you push on the wrench, and a bunch of things come up on top. And the first thing it says is add, and it's got a plus sign. If you push add, it'll say insert a file, insert a photo, take a photo, add tax cut copy camp. So if you go to insert a photo, I'll even show you what it does. You can pick a photo from anywhere. Say I want to insert the photo of the ape. I took it, I took a screenshot of it. He's on the screen. Now if you grab it in the right hand corner, one of those dots, whoops, and you pull it, you can make him, you know, a part of the canvas. And how, like how do you get rid of the black edges? How do you get rid of the black edges? Now that that's something that I haven't learned exactly how to do yet. 
Okay. It's interesting that you said that. I do it in a very un unconventional way, and it's not right. Okay, so we'll learn that next time. <laughs> oh, or, yeah, <laughs> or, exactly. or another time. We'll, we'll I learn mean, that another time. You can literally time. take the eraser, but you can't get a clean line and erase it like that. So that's using the eraser tool. Where is the where that. is the eraser tool? It's in the t it's in between it's in between <clears throat> the It's on the top right, it's on right the top. and right. it's right next to the layer right. image. And I just used my finger to erase all of that. By the way, I didn't even have the stylus with me. So, you know, and I'm just going to say about what's been happening. I'm going to go to us for a second. What's been happening also recently with NFT collections is that they do have these little things flying in the sky next to characters. And so even your blued ape <laughs> is a trait. I mean, that could be a trait. Now, so to have just, like I a... Might just, I might just say, there was a mistake I just made. So I inserted him <laughs> without making a new layer. Oh, so he's not a new layer. So he's not a new layer. Now, if I okay. had made a new layer and I inserted him, he would have been his own layer. But you could still do that. Oh, well, I could still do that. So I could you undo could do what I just did. You could cut him, but you could cut him out of that layer, right? You could, and then I could paste cut him, him make in a new layer and paste him and in. paste him into That's a new right. layer. So that these are things easier. that you can do with Procreate. Yeah. Very, very simple. So many things. Very, you can very always simple. undo. You can always fix anything. Anything. It's awesome. Anything. Okay. More questions about. Wow, we've covered a lot now. So we've covered <laughs> using Procreate to make an NFT, how you use layers in Procreate and for your NFTs, how you layer from the back to the front and each layer goes on top of the layer below it. So literally when you're in Procreate, it goes up like this and the very uppermost layer, and I'll show that again, is the top layer. Let me just go to that again. Show the layers, honey. What? Oh, sorry. Show the layers. So the very so the inserted image is the very oh. uppermost well, layer. Well, guess what? He is a new layer as soon as you insert him. So when you insert I a photograph, wrong. it becomes its own it layer. It becomes its own layer. So if you grab onto it with the stylus, you could literally just move that layer. What over. you would do is, yeah, if you're on the layer, you push the arrow. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it's the arrow on top of the screen. Why do you have oh, what the arrow? Live thing. This arrow. Up here. Okay, so if you go up, if you look at the very top of the screen and you look on the top left where it says gallery, next to gallery are tools. There's and the, the wrench. The last tool is an arrow. The very if last you push tool the arrow, is the arrow. It highlights your layer. And then you can. It highlights what's in your layer. Highlights what's in your layer. And you can take your finger, put it on the screen, not on where the item is in the layer, but you can move it around. And literally, you can pull it right on top of the clown. You could make it his nose. <laughs> you and you could resize it just by grabbing that corner. Not only okay. that, you could turn it if you wanted to. So it was upside down. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So yeah. So these are things I'm gonna go back to us now. <laughs> so these are <laughs> these are all the different kinds of things that you can do. So Rob said off topic, with crypto values dropping, our NFT price is also changing. What a great question, and yes, it is off topic, but it's a really great question. And the answer to that is, and let me put it back up. The wonderful thing about cryptocurrency dropping is that the cost for buying Ethereum has gone down by, all, by like two thirds, okay? So it's around, some, somewhere around a thousand-ish dollars right now in US dollars for Ethereum. It, it's gone up a little, but Basically, what's great about that is that it's easier to buy NFTs now. It's easier to invest in NFTs now. It's easier to invest in a collection right now. And it does make the cost of an NFT on, for example, OpenSea less because the value of Ethereum is less. So when Ethereum was $3,000 or $4,000 for one Ethereum, if an NFT was one ETH, then it was valued at $3,000. Well, the value of Ethereum has dropped around the $1,000 range. So has that gone down? Yes. What's great about that is it makes things so much more affordable. So is this the time to buy Yes. Is this the time to put out a collection? Yes. This is a perfect time for you to be able to build your own NFT collection, 
create an NFT collection for less because a lot of the generative software that you pay for charges in ETH, charges in cryptocurrency. So if they're charging one Ethereum to create, let's say a 10K collection, what used to be $3,000 is now around $1,000. So it's so much more affordable at the moment. So is this a good, a good thing? In my opinion, yes, I think it's a great thing. It's like when housing prices are at the very top, is that the time to buy? Well, if you have to, you have to, right? But if you don't have to, is that the time to buy? No, not really. Not really, unless you've got FOMO, okay? So if there's something that you're desperate to buy, and you can afford it, who cares? Just go ahead and buy it. But when is the best time to buy? When it's at the bottom, okay? And we're right now, I don't know if we're at the bottom, kind of hoping that we are, but if we're at the bottom of cryptocurrency prices, now is the time to buy. So that's a great question. Thank you so much for that. Okay, let me go back to, what do you want to know so maybe next time we're going to cover more procreate i'm not sure but what do you want to know about next because we have just covered how to create an nft in procreate wait wait oh yes sal go back to go back to the canvas again there's one thing i didn't show you and it's just a simple thing but it's like huge so if you go to your layers and you go below all your layers it says background color if you push on background color, it gives you number one, all primary color options. So if I wanted the background to be yellow, I'm pushing on the color yellow. You can't see it, but my finger is pushing it. And there it goes. Your background is yellow, just like that. And obviously you can change it to whatever color you want just by using the color wheel. So now you'd wanna duplicate your background to have multiple background colors. Exactly, but this is right. Exactly. So I hit done and the background color is yellow. Can you duplicate your background? Let's see. So let's go to background color. Oh, I don't think you can. Okay, so if you can't duplicate your background color, then you would want to create another layer. Bring it, bring it down the layers because you can manipulate layers, you can move layers and you'd want to put it above the background color, but in between layer one and the background color. Okay, exactly. So can you quick do that with the plus sign? What? No. Oh. So create another layer. So bring that layer down, drag it down. So you just- You hold the layer, hold on. Wow, I can't, okay. You hold the layer and you pull, and it slides the layer down. It's not gonna go below the- Oh, whoa. okay, so- Maybe this is not the best time to show you. Yeah, that. we got a little ahead of ourselves. I okay. just wanted to show you how you how easy it is to stick a background behind your NFT. Right. And that's so how easy it is. Or the best way to do that in Procreate is to create a layer, bring it down, and put it behind above the background color because that background is is permanently there, right? It's not duplicatable. It looks like it's not. It looks like it's not duplicatable. So you want to have backgrounds that you can then change. So you want that to be your bottom layer. Okay, you want it to be your bottom layer. So your background, your original layer should probably not be a color. Your original layer should probably just be transparent. And then you create your first layer, which will be your background. Right. And then your background, you want to duplicate different background colors or shapes or images or whatever you're doing for your background and then above that you start to build your character that sounds right okay so are there any questions about that think about what you want us to do next put it in the comments below this video and then if you haven't subscribed to our channel Please subscribe now because we are trying to hit a thousand subscribers so that we can get into the YouTube Partner Program and you can help us do that by just subscribing to our channel. That would be fantastic and watching our videos. Thank you so much for doing that. And you know I love those likes. So if you like this video, please give it a like because that also really helps us with our YouTube. So, okay guys. We are going to say thank you so much. <laughs> Why are you grabbing my head? <laughs> We're gonna say thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you so much. 
and we will see you in the next video. Ciao, guys.